I love Jonan Vasquez's shit. Creator, writer, producer, and artist of Nicktoon's cult favorite, Invader Zim. Man, this show blew me away when I first saw it. My business is done! Then someone introduced me to his comic creations, namely, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and its mini spin-offs. Naturally, my first impressions were a bit jarring. It looks- ah, ah, Oh god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah, ah, ah. You can't hurt anyone anymore! Dear lord, I thought Invader Zim was dark. Every page takes you deeper and deeper into a plane of dismembered limbs, blood sacrifices, cosmic horrors, baby eating, and projectile ickiness. There is no god in this world. Well, there is, but he's a lazy fatty that doesn't care what's going on down here. But as I read and reread the comic book, it's not, not a, comic a comic book, book it's, a, it's graphic a graphic novel. I began to see the violence and gore used to very dramatic effect to depict the dark world that Johnny inhabits, which is either a manifestation of his own sick mentality or something far more sinister controlling him. I've also seen it used to great comedic effect. The reasons to trigger such mayhem being incredibly trivial in proportions to the act. Um, could someone give me some toilet paper? You should have checked before you went! There's also a very nice forward by Rob Trab, another well known underground comic artist. Am I the only one that thinks that's an oxymoron? Anyway, he basically says that in society we are taught to ignore all those little violent impulses we get. This is a good thing in that it keeps people alive. In theory, at least. But bad for the humors in that now we have a lot of obnoxious dicks that are perfectly free to be obnoxious dicks. That guy that cuts you off. That bitch that won't get off the cell phone. Those pricks that rob the American people then hold the economy at gunpoint. You know, the little things in life. Shreb's argument is set forth in a metaphor that we each have this little monster that's inside of all of us, and we use gore, horror, revenge fantasy, and black humor to feed it little by little and wear down its teeth. And when those urges subside, we are ready to re-enter society. He also states that if neglected, a lot of these little monsters can go on a feeding frenzy. I of course would argue that there are people that feed their monsters way too much to the point they can't even fit in their cages anymore. But again, I think it all comes down to your mileage may vary. And in theory, this comic book... It's not, not a, comic a comic book, book it's, a, it's graphic a graphic novel! ...is good for everyone. Of course, a lot of people disagreed with that at the time I discovered this. You can't just pick up and read something like this. There are requirements, guidelines, rules. That's where today's featured character comes in. That's right, it's Anguish from Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. One of the motifs of Jonan's work is to use shorter comics as act breaks between his longer stories and arcs. They're usually one or two pages long and sometimes feature Johnny himself, but more often times feature another side character. It is in one of these vignettes in issue 5 of Johnny the Homicidal Maniac that we see the birth of Anguish. My friends are so uncool. My life is a dark pit of darkness. But I am not alone in this pit. It only feels that way. My dark solitude is shared by others. Still, it's hard to be the real me without others acknowledging it. My pain is awesome. <laughs> this dreary world demands that I be idle with my progressive nature. They laugh at my attempts to be different. They laugh at me, fools, still trapped in their petty high school mentality. But there's a place I go to get away from that, if only for a little while. A place where I don't have to put up with all the ignorance and undeserved attitude. Somewhere where I feel I belong. It's just a little nightclub and only open one night a week, but I would live there if I could. I practice my mysterious look before leaving. I don't drive, so I have to go with friends. They don't understand me, but they try to be like me. <laughs> it's so sad. The only thing keeping me from screaming is my clove cigarette. My friends smoke them because I do. And then we arrive, where I can be appreciated for my originality. Oh my god, someone's wearing blue jeans. I like how Jonan signs it with just a touch of self-mockery. And if that's just a touch, I hate to see heavy-handed. Isn't this great? Isn't this great, everybody? This is great. 
Then surprisingly, Anguish made another appearance down the line. I say surprisingly because either these shorts feature a one-shot character like the delirious teenage mother or 15-year-old midget junkie, or regulars like Wobble-Headed Bob or Happy Noodle Boy. Jonah must really like her, because she even had her own biography among the official cast in the back of the collector's edition of this comic book. It's not a comic book, it's a graphic novel! This is kind of a big deal since it implies that she is a canon character in this world, despite never interacting with Johnny or any of the others. Anyway, let's take a look. Hello? Oh, hi, Chloe. Nothing. Dancing? Where? Mm, okay. I just have to do my hair and makeup. I'll be ready in three hours. <laughs> so basically, Anne goes to a nightclub and rags on a bunch of people. Only to later be teased at a Denny's, or Denny's. Hey Morticia, Halloween's over. You can take the costume off. Slings and arrows, slings and arrows. Why must I be persecuted for my differences? Of course, to be fair, a Denny's is a den of shame for pretty much everyone involved. I discovered the one problem with putting bacon in ice cream. No idea. No, you get like the fatty bit, like the really fatty bit of bacon, and you're just like... So what does this all mean? Well, let's start with the nature of Anne's persona, namely goth. Now, goth is considered a movement that budded from punk and is often characterized by a love of the macabre, ranging from modern-day horror and supernatural to 19th century gothic literature, from which the movement derived its name from. Goths are often depicted as antisocial. This is not true. Goths are plenty social. And they don't have defined personalities or restricted interests. Why, is the movie busted or something? No, it's if just it's that... Splash, I put it on your Netflix list. No, 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 it's not that Splash. I just wanted to say it again. Why would you... Uh, hold on. Goth, like all movements, is a form of expression. It's a way of showing the world your interests, your passions, and hopefully the creativity that stems from it. Really no different from being a, a super fan, a LARPer, a hot rodder, or dare I even say it, the cheerleader, pure evil. The problem lies with perceptions. Human nature dictates that when people see something they don't understand or don't want to understand, they freak the fuck out. But since man can't kill whatever they don't understand anymore, again, that's just how it works on paper, they cope by ridiculing it and or depicting it as something wrong or disgusting. But eventually something breaks through and becomes popular. And over time you have more and more people doing something, not because it's a personal expression of something that interests them, but in hopes that they too will be popular, or for personal gain. Don't look at me! I was just in this for the fashion! Then you have the casualties of this conflict. You know, properties that become so anonymous with a particular group that it pretty much ruins them for the general public, despite what good qualities they may have. If you're a nerd, your favorite TV show is... If you're a film buff, your favorite movie is... If you're an otaku, you own the platinum box set of... Everyone used to really like, but now they all hate. That's where people like Anne come in. You see, rather than working to debunk a lot of these misconceptions and encourage others to try new stuff, they actually get territorial about it and over-criticize any newcomers that show interest. Why? Because whether they are aware of it or not, they use the outsider image to make them feel unique and deep by claiming to be outcasts of a society that won't accept them or isn't progressive enough. No, that's okay because they're a rebel. We will not be quiet. We will not try to blend in. Disappear in the background. Play second fiddle. We are Miracle Whip and we will not tone it down. And either receiving it or dishing it out, they thrive on negative energy, like the Sith. But not the cool kind that shoot lightning and choke people with their mind. No, they're these selfish, moody, whiny attention grabbers, setting up strategically placed hoops one must jump through in order to be unpopularly popular, while being just as critical of other people as other people are of them. If you want to be one of the nonconformists, all you have to do is dress just like us and listen to the same music we do. Okay. 
Jonan, however, works very hard to separate his works from this mentality by starting these little meta-dialogues between characters. Dylan, why is it whenever we're not talking about being discriminated by people for the way we look, we make fun of other people? I mean, what makes you any different from the jock holes that were laughing at your hair that one time? It's not like we talk about anyone important. Some people just asking for it. Like that little shit in the theater. Besides, if we talk about anything else, we might expose the fact that most of our arrogance is based on exploiting a fashionable alienation rather than anything substantial. Oh, yeah. Hey! Look at that fat girl! Another vomit joke? Christ! He's everything that's wrong with goth comics, and I'm gonna take him down, baby. I can't believe I ever liked him. I'm a clown, by the way. How is Filler Bunny goth? Everything he does is goth. I read it on the internet. However, the most poignant and tragically beautiful of these examples would be Johnny's dying words. Well, his first time dying, anyway. It's such an easy thing to say that you hate something. So easy to hate. What a piece of shit I am. I, I can't believe I went the easy way. I thought I knew something. I, I wish I knew something. Anything. <laughs> Your head looks like a rejected jelly bean. <coughs> Anguish, however, is his masterpiece, a self-absorbed hypocrite that uses the combined self-expression of others in place of her own identity. She thinks she's breaking conventions while all the while setting up more harmful ones in their place. Taking alienation and death, a concept that humanity has spent millennia coming to grips with, and basically boiling it down to the level of eyeliner, clover cigarettes, and the two-disc collector's edition of The Crow. But you know what? I still wouldn't mind seeing more of her. She has an interesting persona in the same manner as Invader Zim. A character with an unswayable confidence in what they believe in, but they're really just spinning their wheels. It's a shame she only made two appearances. You can tell that Jonan had a fondness for her, or at least tried to explore her potential. The only problem with that is, is that as mentioned before, every other incidental character slash victim echoes the same viewpoint. In fact, Jonah literally filled hell with all the ignorant, self-absorbed posers. I guess the idea being that they distracted themselves with their own vices, hubris, and self-pity, to the point that it prevented them from doing any good in life. The only thing that really separates her from the rest is that she never seems to get her comeuppings, which is actually an interesting concept in itself. She's the one that lives. In the end, this graphic novel is arguably art, and art all depends on what the observer brings to it. I'm sure it could be a fashion accessory, or a manual for anarchy, or even a early warning sign of mental instability, but that's not what the author intended. And whether or not you like it or not, you have to admit that all those aforementioned views are incredibly shallow and don't do it justice. So basically, anguish is Jonan's way of saying, Please don't turn my book into a stupid mayonnaise commercial for retards who consider condiments a status symbol. Miracle Whip, if you don't like it, get the fuck out. So if I had to put a cap on these ramblings, I would say don't take yourself and others too seriously. Try new things and encourage others to try new things. With the obvious exceptions. Look, don't you want to have sex with strangers in truck stop bathrooms for money? How great does that sound? Oh god, my tooth fell out. I'm so completely original. My new look is all the rage. I'll wrap my small intestines round my neck and set fire to myself on stage. I'm such a nonconformist that I'm not going to conform with the rest of you. Okay, I'll do it. Great! Well, I think we just got put in our place. Yeah, we just got golf served. <laughs>